Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club, everybody. It seems that overnight, practically, um, the political landscape of Bitcoin and crypto has completely shifted. And not only with Gary Gensler and the SEC doing a complete 180 on the Ethereum ETFs and Ethereum in itself, but also in Washington and Congress with these bills that are going through, these pro-crypto bills that are, are moving through um, the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives. So I'm going to get into all of the news on that, guys. But before I get into that, I wanted to share with you guys um, something that happened to me last night. I was actually approached by a, a crypto project and they wanted me to advertise for them on, on this channel. And it gave me an opportunity to possibly make some money doing this channel, which I don't make anything off of this channel at this point. Um, and it would have been nice because there, it, it is a lot of work to kind of put the research in and prepare these videos and, and everything that I put into these things. but. I ended up turning it down. Um, and it wasn't that it wasn't a great, a good project. It, uh, they've, they've been around for years. So it wasn't something that I really feared that I'd put out to you guys. And it would end up being like a rug pull where they just made off with a lot of your money. Uh, but it, it isn't a project that I'm completely 100% about, you know? Um, and so I, I chose to kind of, um, go away from that and I chose not to take them up on their offer, but I just wanted to kind of bring this up to you guys because I don't really do this channel for money. Obviously I'm not making money at all from this, this channel. Uh, but the only thing I do ask of you guys is I, I, it is very important to me, these animal sanctuaries that I bring to you every month. Um, so if you guys do find any value in my videos, um, please really consider going over and helping them out. Now this month I am supporting, uh, at olive branch animal sanctuary. And you guys can see they have, these guys are a very small animal sanctuary guys, but they do have, you know, a lot of animals that they are caring for. Check this one out. This is a <laughs> nothing to see here. Just a chicken watching TV. <laughs> but they do have black cats also, guys, which is super cool. It's what this channel is about, kind of. <laughs> They've got bunnies, dogs, um, you know, just all kinds of animals that they're really helping out. So go over and it doesn't take a lot to to help these guys out. Again, these guys are very small. So even just a few dollars donation really helps them out. And that's that's all I'm really asking for from you guys. I I don't ask much, but if you can go over even just going over and helping out by liking their Facebook or their Instagram really helps these guys out. This is, this page is their link tree. And I do have that link in the description of the video. So you can go over, you can see they have Venmo, PayPal, they've got an Amazon and Chewy wish list, and you can just find their Facebook and their Instagram to go over and give them a like there. So please head over and help them out. It is a 501C as well. So it is a tax write-off. Okay, so let's get into this news. Yesterday, the House of Representatives voted on the FIT 21 bill. Now, this article says uh, U.S. House approves crypto FIT 21 bill with a wave of Democratic support. Now, this, I watched this on C SPAN yesterday, and wow, it was. Tremendous, actually, because what I, in my opinion, the SAB 121 repeal that took the SEC's rule for banks 
not really being able to custody Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, they they repealed that. And that's in in Washington on Biden's desk now. And we're kind of waiting to see if he actually follows through on vetoing that or if he's actually going to kind of backpedal on his stance, which seemingly is what is happening in the political landscape right now. And I'll get into all of that. But guys, my opinion was that this Fit 21 bill wasn't going to have as much support as that SAB 121 repeal and that it might get through the House, but it would probably be buried in the Senate until I watched what happened yesterday. And we had 21 Democratic congressmen that voted for the, the SAB 121 repeal. Yesterday, we saw 71 Democrat senators come over in support of this bill. So it was very, very bipartisan um, in, in getting passed, which was, I think it surprised everyone. Uh, we had Nancy Pelosi that voted for this, this bill. And it, it just had very, very little opposition. And so I think now that we've seen that, that the Senate, it's going to the Senate now, maybe it comes back with some revisions that the House, House has to, to vote on again. But I think the Senate has to actually sit up and take notice now. So this has a lot better, a lot more support and a lot better chance of actually going through, which is huge for cryptocurrency. What it actually does is it takes a lot of the power away from the SEC and Gary Gensler, where they've been enforced, uh, like regulation by enforcement. They've just been out suing everybody and their dog that's in crypto. Um, but this will take a lot of the crypto space out of Gary Gensler's jurisdiction. And it kind of lays out a uh, kind of a rule and goes away from the Howey test and has more crypto specific ways of deciding what is a security and what's a commodity. And so it it's a very crypto friendly bill, um, which would be very, very bullish if they get this through uh, the Senate and gets passed into law. Now, I'm going to jump back over. We saw uh, Gary Gensler before the House met for this. Uh, he sent this long letter to the House saying, please don't don't uh, approve this bill. It's horrible. Uh, you won't have me, the cop, to protect the, the investors um, <laughs> as if the CFTC has no power to protect investors. But this was just typical Gary fashion came out saying that the Wild West needed a, a cop on the beat and he was the guy for it, where he's actually hurt a lot of the innovation in the space. But a lot of the political um, ideas that we've, or the political landscape has shifted, you know, with the Democrats, they've actually with Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler and this anti-crypto army that has been overwhelmingly Democrat um, driven, we've actually seen that wave break and come back kind of to a neutral stance. So I want to jump over to this video from uh, CNBC. This is Mike Novogratz, and he is the head at Galaxy. He's part of the uh, Invesco Galaxy Bitcoin ETF that was approved back in January with everybody else. But Novogratz is a self-proclaimed Democrat. So it's interesting to hear what he says about this political shift and um, kind of coming away from that anti-crypto army. So listen in to this. ETH is a lot higher in the last uh, 24 hours on speculation that the ETF is coming. What, step back a little bit. What seems to have happened is, you know, Donald Trump two weeks ago got on stage and said, I'm the crypto president. 
And it was on the same day that Joe Biden had threatened to veto a relatively obscure piece of legislation that the SEC had put through a rule on accounting, uh, saying that crypto assets in custody needed to be held on balance sheet. And that kind of set off a firestorm where it almost became a purity test, like Republican, good for crypto, Democrat, bad for crypto. And I think the Democratic regime woke up and saying, this is crazy, right? There are more crypto owners in America than there are dog owners, right? We have 85 million people that own crypto, and a lot of them are single issue voters. And the Democrats looked like they were the party against dogs. And so you've seen a pretty dramatic change. First of all, you know, you had nine senators cross the aisle and 21 congressmen on the SAB 21. And so that's passed uh, the repeal of that. And it'll go to Biden's desk. We'll see if he vetoes it or not. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, what seems to be a complete about face with the SEC on on uh, the e ETF. And, you know, like, listen, I don't have any inside info other than talking to people in the markets. Uh, and we'll see. We do have a uh, an ETF in, in registrations. So I got to be a little bit careful. But assuming, you know, the market is right and the market's usually pretty smart, um, it feels like someone at the Biden, Biden White House made a call and said, guys, we can't we can't be the party against crypto anymore. And I think that's a seismic shift because if those things actually happen, prices are going to be much higher than here. So you're speculating that a phone call was made from the White House to Gary Gensler's office and Gary Gensler, who is for the most part, as you know, been relatively opposed to these instruments. In fact, he was opposed to the Bitcoin ETF until a court told him otherwise. You think he's going to do it, quote unquote, voluntarily or maybe pseudo voluntarily am, if, in fact, the president is telling him otherwise? A, I am sensing a widespread shift amongst Democrats that don't want to let crypto be a big election issue, right? The crypto super PACs have raised over $150 million and they've targeted Sherrod Brown and John Tester, you know. Uh, elections that matter uh, matter dearly to Democrats in swing states, uh, in, in vulnerable Senate seats. Uh, crypto should be bipartisan. And quite frankly, for our industry to do well, it needs to be bipartisan. And it has been really Elizabeth Warren right. and a small group of people that has kind of held the Democrats hostage on this. And what the Senate broadly said, Chuck Schumer, you know, being the Senate leader who voted to over overturn against Elizabeth was enough, enough. Like, this, this is becoming dumb. And, and my, so I'm sensing a real you're, shift. You're, you, talk about, you, you, you talk about the industry doing this uh, as if they're separate from you. You've been a, a big supporter over the years of President Biden. I don't know if you still are. Uh, but how much are you part of this effort? Listen, you know, I've had a, a real view that this needs to be bipartisan. So I've been meeting with Democrats and Republicans equally, uh, trying to, to, to both educate uh, on the Democratic side, I've been trying to talk sense. I was like, guys, this this could be the biggest own goal of, of the, the last six years. There is no reason to make crypto, which is a technology, a, a political issue. And I think hopefully that message is starting to uh, to resonate. OK, so I think Mike is actually on to something there you know i think a lot of the democratic party has kind of woken up to why are we so against this what this technology why and it it helps the people like bitcoin and crypto actually benefits the people the little guy the working class which the De democrat party kind of boasts itself as being like a champion of the working class. So I think a lot of the Democrat um, de Democratic politicians have kind of woke up to this just recently and gone, what are we doing? You know, we're going to lose a lot of our support by by being against this. So they're they're starting to show a lot more support on these crypto friendly bills. And it's just been I mean, it's just been literally like the last week or so that this has happened. So it's it's been pretty amazing to watch. Now, the one um, the one person, the biggest person in uh, the house that is very against pretty much everything crypto, 
she's kind of the Elizabeth Warren of the house. Um, and that's Maxine Waters. So we have Elizabeth Warren, the big opposition in the Senate, and then we have Maxine Waters in the house. And guys, she, it's been interesting. She has, she's really kind of just a, a mouthpiece. You know, she comes to the, the, these meetings with everything just kind of printed out on papers and she just reads it. So I'm not sure if she's really the one behind what she's, she's coming after, or if somebody else like types these things out, but you can really kind of see this in this next video clip. I just want to show you guys, this was her yesterday talking about the fit 21 bill. So listen to this. Thank you very much to your question. Um, Let's see, uh, the major crucified both now. And have intentionally chosen not to register, not to register. They've broken the law already uh, with the SEC. One of the things they want this bill to do, in addition to everything else it's doing, is to make sure uh, that they're not held accountable for the laws they have already broken. This is the SEC at work and the efforts we must, you must take, must support. Uh, the FEC really needs even more staff to deal with the criminal fraud of these crypto companies. And I'm grateful. So, yeah, you can kind of see that's, that's typical uh, Maxine Waters is she's just, she thinks crypto is uh, filled with nothing but criminals. And, you know, I guess we're all criminals in her mind, uh, but she's, she's been very vocal and very against pretty much everything Bitcoin um, and crypto. I want to take you guys, this, this was a, um, a video from about a year ago, I believe. And she, she, <laughs> This one just always makes me laugh. So I just wanted to share this one with you guys. This is Maxine Waters calling Bitcoin Bitcom and saying that it's a Ponzi scream. So I don't know. Listen, listen to this video, guys. The ranking member is now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you very much. There are a number of questions that I would like to ask, but since we started out on BitConf, let's go further into crypto. Chair Gensler, I've heard you Bitcoin. often say there is mass noncompliance by crypto firms in the marketplace today. I'm very concerned with what sounds like gross violations of the law that end in investors getting ripped off. The failures and fraud of crypto firms like Terra Luna, for example, cost investors as much as $60 billion, which was larger than the Madoff Ponzi scheme in 2008. I know that the SEC has brought enforcement actions against Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX, the failure of which cost investors $9 billion. Since we're talking about... Okay, so just funny there. Um, she actually wasn't even talking about crypto and... and and Bitcoin there. She was actually just giving a, a shout out to the hardcore band that I formed a few years ago called Ponzi Scream. Okay, guys, but seriously, um, the thing with Maxine Waters that a lot of people don't realize is that she is in the very same boat as Gary Gensler. And what I mean by that is if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I am very much under the opinion that that Gary Gensler was a family friend of one of the FTX of actually Sam Bankman's Freed's girlfriend, um, Caroline um, Ellison, I believe. And she was part of FTX and Alameda Research. But they Gary Gensler very much gave FTX preferential treatment and met with them several times and didn't prevent that disaster from happening. So he very much didn't protect 
the investors that he's supposed to. And so he has had mud on his face from that whole FTX thing. And Maxine Waters is very much in the same boat, as well as a lot of political people, actually. Uh, Sam Bankman fried donated millions of dollars to both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat. But guys, I want to show you a, you know, everything um, today. Sorry, a clip of Maxine Waters uh, with Sam Bankman fried There's a picture of him of them here, but there's a video I want to show you guys of her blowing kisses to Sam Bankman fried Guys, watch, listen to this. So here's here's this picture of of Sam Bankman fried with his arm around Maxine Waters, but watch this video. You see her blow kisses and and flirtily wave to Sam Bankman fried there. Mwah. <laughs> Just unreal. And so, you know, Maxine Water Waters has a lot of mud on her face too, and she's coming out hard against the entire crypto um, industry because crypto made her look bad, basically. So, anyways, guys, a lot of a lot of the uh, this anti crypto movement in the Democratic side of politics has started to shift back too neutral at very least um a lot of be a lot of democrats actually coming out in in support of crypto now so i think we're seeing some progress there um now let's talk about the ethereum etfs today is the big day um and i think we'll probably it'll probably be drug out until the very end of the day about uh, four o'clock Eastern time, I believe, um, is about when they approved the Bitcoin ETFs. Gary Gensler and the SEC are probably just going to drag their feet as long as possible. But guys, yesterday we saw that they actually, there was some news here, and I'm going to jump over to this tweet says just in the SEC initiates talks with Ethereum ETF issuers for final adjustments to the S1 form. Looks like ETH ETF is a done deal. Now, the reason this is different than uh, what I had reported on in the previous video was the previous news was all about the 19B forms which is technically what needs to be approved by today. Now, there was a lot of people that were out there saying, well, they could approve the 19B forms today and still drag their feet on the S1 forms, which would technically put these ETFs further out from launching. As, as we saw with the Bitcoin ETFs, we saw the uh, 19B forms and the S1 forms approved all at once. And then the ETFs went live the very next day. So a lot of people were saying, yes, they might, might technically be approved today, but they probably won't go live for, who knows, weeks or months until they get the S1s ironed out. But now it's looking like they are actually getting those uh, ducks in a line, and we might see Ethereum trade on Wall Street a lot sooner than a lot of people expected, even with approvals coming today. So anyways, guys, it'll be interesting. We'll have to watch right, or, right about 4 p.m. Eastern time is my guess on when we'll probably have news on the Ethereum ETFs. Um, other news, guys, this is kind of exciting, and this is Bitcoin ETPs. Now, ETPs are exchange-traded products. It's basically the same thing as ETFs. ETFs are exchange-traded funds. But this says Bitcoin ETFs 
get approval to list on the London Stock Exchange. So guys, the UK is launching their own Bitcoin ETFs. Now these will go live on uh, May 28th in six days, I believe. So that's exciting. A whole nother market is opening, but there is a catch here. These London Bitcoin ETFs, guess who cannot buy them? Guess who won't be allowed to buy them for some time? The little guy, the retail investors, guys. The only people that are approved to buy these Bitcoin ETFs in London, at least initially, are going to be, you know, banks and institutions. So once again, this just highlights the need for decentralized finance because traditional finance is never going to let us do what we want with our money. They're always going to be the ones dictating, nope, not you guys, not yet. We're going to give the chance to these big guys first. So a little discouraging, but I think ultimately it's going to be fine. Hopefully um, retail, if they really want to get into it, they know where to go. And that's that's outside of traditional finance. So anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. Again, if you liked anything in this video, please consider going over to Olive Branch animal sanctuary and helping them out guys it's hard work to to run an animal sanctuary so anyways i will see you guys all in the next video bye